your presence in this space is no mere coincidence. It's a meticulous and intentional connection designed to deliver the profound message of Apostle Joshua Selman directly to you. This message goes beyond being a mere source of blessings. It's a dynamic force, sparking the flame of greatness within you. Open your heart expansively and permit your mind to fully immerse in the opulence of this transformative diet. Before we venture further, I extend a sincere invitation for you to actively participate in this meaningful content. Engage by expressing your gratitude. Extend a virtual thumbs up to the video. Share its wisdom with those in your circles. I love the word of God because of its ability to empower men. An ordinary man in the presence of light becomes a mighty man. A weak man in the presence of light becomes a mighty man. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1 says, Arise and shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. It says, For darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people, but upon you the glory of the Lord shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles hmm, will come to your light, and their kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles will come to your light. What is light? The Bible defines it. That which makes manifest is light. Whatever can reveal the glory of God is light. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And it's important for us to appreciate what God has been doing all through this conference. There's been a transference of his wisdom. There's something in scripture called the wisdom of the just. Luke 1, 17. The wisdom of the just. You will have to be in the kingdom to understand the excellency of that wisdom. Hallelujah. It says, by me, wisdom speaking, kings reign and princes decree justice. It says, with me are riches, wealth and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. Hallelujah. One of the major expressions of the glory of God is his wisdom. There are many expressions of the glory of God, but three of them represent the pillars as far as expressing the glory of God is concerned. Number one is his wisdom. Number two is his power. Number three, wealth. Let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. There is glory in wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. There is glory in power. Let not the rich man glory in his riches, but let him that glory a glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Hallelujah. The extent of your exploits in this kingdom does not just depend on God's love for you. Please listen. The same Lord is rich unto all, but our possibilities are defined among other factors by the extent and the quality of light that we receive. He says, but the people that sat in darkness have seen a great light. He made many lights, but then he made two great lights, one to rule the day and the other to rule the night. Your dominion is at the instance of light. In fact, Genesis chapter 1 says, he called the light day and the darkness he called night. Profound revelation. That means in the realm of the spirit, darkness is not when evening comes. The moment there is no light, you are in darkness. God's definition of day is not 8 a.m., not 12 noon. God's definition of day is the arrival of light. And weeping is associated with night and darkness. For as long as it is dark, you will cry. But joy comes with the morning. Hallelujah. So this conference has been a feast of light. And I told you at the start of my session that light has the power to transit men. The assignment of light is to insist that you do not remain at that level. It cannot leave you at that level. Hallelujah. That means there is a more superior version of you. I like to use the molting of a snake. You know how a snake molts? Comes out of its former self. Becomes bigger, greater, and more effective. You will look at your former self and not find it again. Because 
there is a wiser version a more powerful version many believers fail because they do not have privileges like this to be methodically taught the ways of god are we together now the bible says he showed his ways to moses results happen in the kingdom not by luck not by guess it happens at the instance of understanding god is a god of patterns please listen carefully everything god creates within it is the pattern for the continuity of that result so he made man he made woman and never had to make them again he designed a pattern within that system that every time you want that result you find the pattern and the proof you have found the pattern is the glory connected to the pattern the glory of God in your finances will only be revealed when the patterns he's designed as far as his economic system is concerned is found. And so Jeremiah 6.16 says, stand in the way and ask for the ancient part. Ask. That's what you do when you do not know the way. Ask. Are we together? And he says, when you find it, walk there in it. And you will step into your Sabbath. A man can come into his Sabbath. It can be clear that the glory of God is at work in your life. This is my final session. I just want you, I hope you're, you're getting something already. Now, let me remind you of one more thing. Most believers do not know why they exist. As far as God's prophetic program is concerned. It's beyond heaven. Are we together now? Yes. You're going to be learning something very powerful. I have one more key and then we'll pray. My life changed when I realized this, that I exist to be a manifestation of the glory of God upon the earth. The word glory comes from the Hebrew word kabod. The Greek is doxa, the weightiness an investigation as to why an object or a person is that desirable that worthy of admiration is called glory so if you want to study the glory of god you have to investigate all the attributes of god that makes god god his holiness his wisdom his power the bible says we are his workmanship pastor created in christ jesus unto good works which god had preordained that we should walk in it so you're not just a believer roaming around the streets of leicester or roaming around the united kingdom no god is depending on the excellency of his power in your life to get glory that means every one of us is a vista a mirror through which the world will learn god and i hope if you are the only reference men have to know God, you will not misrepresent him. Yeah. Are we together? That if I'm the only one who becomes a mirror through which men will learn God, can they praise him when they look at my life? So the pursuit for an excellent life is beyond a carnal pursuit to live and make ends meet. It is your participation as far as allowing the glory of God to be revealed in your life is concerned this is the correct platform to teach on favor prosperity and all of that the moment you do not connect any pursuit to divine purpose it becomes carnality carnality is not because of what you are seeking it is the fact that whatever you seek does not have a kingdom purpose connected to it so prosperity becomes a cancerous and destructive message if you cannot reveal how the role it plays in revealing the Christ. You get that now? So the entire circumference of the believer's work is with respect to your becoming so that you can become a greater expression of his glory upon the earth. The end point of that is found in Galatians 1.24 and they glorified God in me. God can be glorified in a man. God can be glorified in a businessman. God can be glorified in a pastor. God can be glorified in a church. God can be glorified in Leicester. God can be glorified in your church. God can be glorified in you as a parent. Listen, understand the end point and your Christian experience will not become a plethora of burdensome rituals. 
many believers hate church and god because of the narrative about the faith life they have been given nothing exciting nothing inspiring they get saved and come to church and eventually they become angry and weary because they cannot find a sense of destiny. There is no excitement. But when you know that your life should be an ever increasing revelation, manifestation of the glory of God, you should never have a better yesterday. It's not so because the path of the just is as a shining light that shines more and more onto the perfect day are we learning but the key listen please the key is not just the knowledge of what god has made available for you but you must know how to engage it the bible says in ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18 it says having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of god through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart that in as much as the zoe life in truth because the bible declares that when you encounter the son you have life but whether or not that life will be made manifest is knowledge dependent knowledge dependent not salvation dependent salvation makes it a fact that you are a recipient of the life of god but knowledge releases that which you have received in your spirit to be made manifest are we together it is for this reason he gave unto some apostles some prophets pastors teachers evangelists for the maturing the equipping of the saints that when the saints become mature they will do the work of the ministry that together as one body we will come into the fullness of the stature of the measure of Christ. Not to, tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men wherein they lie to deceive. Every conference should make the sense matured. You should gain mastery in spiritual things. You should gain command. You should be able to tame life like an animal on the strength of light. Are we learning? Yeah. You should know how things work. This is why conferences like this are a retreat. You camp in God's presence. Men like Kenneth E. Hagin would hold 30 days or more. You know why? Because the truths required for an excelling life are finite. You can lay hold of eternal life. It is the knowledge of God that is eternal. We will never exhaust the knowledge of him. But the factors that make for dominion are finite. You can exhaust it like a course curriculum. A professor never stops learning, but he's still a professor. He has attained a point of mastery accredited globally. This is what you should get to. The realm, your pursuit. And the Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully so we must through this conference cover the gaps in our spiritual understanding something i do not know is responsible for my limitation and if you can take that responsibility and cry like blind Bartimeo, thou son of david show me mercy god shows you mercy by connecting you to light bearers and for some of you who have the light but you do not have grace to demonstrate that light. Because you see, the ten virgins had lamp. The problem was the oil. They were all virgins. It was not an issue of sin or righteousness. It was an issue of wisdom and foolishness. And the wisdom there was that they added oil to the lamp. And the recommendation for those who had lamps without oil was go to them that sell and buy. There are still men that sell. Only that you do not buy with money. You buy with meekness. You buy with humility. You buy with patience. You buy with endurance. Can we pray now? Give me an encounter again. By your spirit. Samalanoko <sighs> Subatia. Someone is praying. Someone who is tired of this realm. Knowing that there can be more. 
knowing that there can be more knowing that there can be more a worship minister knowing there can be more a man of god knowing there can be more a parent knowing there can be more a businessman knowing there can be more there can be more i insist i press for the more higher dimensions of grace i press for the more there can be greater levels of increase greater levels of achievement greater levels of exploits as far as the spirit life is concerned a few seconds you are praying in jesus mighty name we pray amen so we'll have a very short session as i wrap up i just want to give a charge just to show you one more principle one more mystery and then we'll take the time to pray we'll pray over our request and then i believe that will be done for the morning daniel 11 and verse 32 says but the people that do know that god it says they shall be strong and they shall do exploits hallelujah your exploits is at the mercy of the God that you know. But then according to scripture, there are essentially three dimensions of God that he's allowed the saints to explore in knowing him. Number one, you know God by studying his character. Number two, you know God by studying his wisdom, his ways, principles, Three, you know God by studying his power. We are not given the liberty to know all of God, not in this life, not even through eternity. That is what makes him God. However, he designed a curriculum by himself that men can learn him sufficient to excel within this realm. You can study his character. It was on account of that study, the psalmist arrived at many conclusions. For instance, the Lord is gracious and compassionate. He is slow to anger and he's rich in love. It is important you understand the character of God because that is what you use to judge prophecies. That is what you use to judge every other thing in life. You see that now? And then you study his ways. Moses prayed a prayer and he said, show me your ways. Five verses later, he said, show me your glory. You would have to know his ways to understand his glory. And then in Ephesians chapter 1, beginning from verse 18, Paul was praying over the church in Ephesus. And among the many things he prayed that they would understand was that their eyes of understanding would be enlightened to understand the hope of his calling, the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints, I like verse 19, and the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe. He prayed that we will understand the extent of his power, the kind of power that was invested that brought Jesus from Hades to the earth and took him to the throne. Because when you understand that power, it can take you from anywhere to anywhere. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I hope you still remember all our teachings from yesterday morning, the harvest, the world of sinners, that the believer must redefine the name we call the unsaved. For as long as you call them sinners, you'll be compelled to run away from them. But when you see them as the harvest, it plants compassion within you to reach out to them. Hallelujah. And then yesterday, we also looked at the fact that it is not enough to be good sowers. We must understand the reaper. Hallelujah. And we shared the principles that would help us reap. Remember? We also looked at the life of Ruth as a reaper. This morning, I want to show you by the Spirit of God something very powerful. <laughs> Psalm 92 from verse 12. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Next verse. Read with me if you're a Christian. Those. Hold on. Don't rush. Those that be. 
shall flourish in the courts of our God. Uh huh. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourishing. The final verse. To show that the Lord is upright. Amen. Amen. Isaiah 61 verse 3. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. To give them beauty for ashes. Someone say amen. amen. The oil of joy for mourning. Amen. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Amen. Now. That they might be called. There is a name he wants them to be called. The trees of righteousness the planting of the lord that when they become the planting of the lord the return on investment is that he might be glorified we explored seeds farmers soils harvests but i want you to know this morning that god is also a sower god does not just give seeds to sowers and bread to eaters. He himself is a sower. Are we together? Number two, his seeds are men. You have to understand this as we wrap up this session. That God is also a sower and his seeds are men. His soil represents the various regions of the earth. Anywhere in the earth qualifies to be called his soil because the earth is the Lord's. He is at liberty to plant anywhere and he does not violate any principle because the earth belongs to him. So God is a sower. His seeds are men. Are we together now? Assigned territories for some or anywhere across the earth represents the soil where he is at liberty to plant his seeds. Now please listen. Men like seeds and trees can grow, can flourish, and can become fruitful. Men just like trees, men just like seeds, they have capacity to grow, they have capacity to flourish, they have capacity to become fruitful. Are we learning already? Now, the harvest that God gets from this planting is that he becomes glorified across the nations of the earth. The harvest that God gets from his planting, when you become the planting of the Lord, he also expects harvest. And that the harvest he gets from that planting are we together? Like every farmer who rejoices when he comes to also reap. He's also a reaper, not just a sower. And when he comes to reap from his farm, from his seeds, from the trees, he expects glory, a revelation of his glory. That is his own return on investment. The harvest God gets from his planting is that he becomes glorified across the nations of the earth john 15 and verse 8 hearing is my father glorified when you bear much fruit so shall you be my disciples matthew 5 16 let your light so shine before men before men before men before men not in secret before men that they may see he wants them to see if they don't see even if the light is there, God cannot be glorified. It is not the presence of the light that gives him glory. It is the fact that men are compelled to see. Are we together? That all men see and then glorify your father which is in heaven. Now most believers know that they have seeds. But they do not know they are seeds themselves. Are we together? It's not enough to know that you have seeds. Like I taught you yesterday night, it's not enough to know that you have a seed of whatsoever. You must also realize that as a believer, you are a seed. 
and that the farmer who plants you is God himself. Are we together? It's called the planting of the Lord. The planting that God goes to the farm and comes to Leicester and brings you and plants you. When he plants you, there are expectations. Occasionally, he will visit his property and see how you are growing. And then at a time, he will expect harvest. There is nothing God gives a man that he does not expect a harvest from. He gave unto one five talent, two talent, one talent, and allowed some time. The one with five made five more, two made two more. But there was one interesting person. That man was already angry from, you see, the Bible says he gave them according to his several ability, meaning he studied them to do that. And at the end of the story, you will see he was right. The man who had one deserved one. Are we together? And so when he came to demand accountability, the man with one said, I know you are a hard man. You see the state of his heart already. Okay, what is your own return? You are a hard man. I've been waiting to tell you this. <laughs> you like to reap where you did not sow. Did you see his understanding? <laughs> you like to reap where you did not sow. So I thought instead of throwing this away, you should be lucky that I even held that one. <laughs> now hear this. Hear what he was called. Wicked, number two, unprofitable. Wicked and unprofitable. What was the consequence? The one talent was collected and not returned to heaven, given to someone else. If you understand my message this morning, you will know how to give glory to God with your life. It's important to know that you are a seed yourself. And that if you found yourself here, whether by birth, by migration, job, work, whatever it is, you must have this consciousness that I am the planting of the Lord. And that in being planted here, there are no mistakes, there are no accidents. Whether it's Leicester or any other part of UK, Europe, anywhere at all, or following online, whatever region, I am the planting of the Lord. Are we together? And that God has an expectation over my life. God has an expectation of a harvest. He intends to reap something out of my life. He intends to reap glory out of my life. He intends to reap glory out of my life. The same way, listen, the Bible shows us a picture of what God does when trees don't bear fruit. It's not an interesting experience. In one narrative, he cursed the tree. The compassionate God looked at the tree and said, you are receiving from the earth and you are not delivering. And yet the Bible says it was not the time of figs. I thought that was harsh. It was not the time of figs. But because Jesus came close to the tree, he expected his presence to make an effect. Because the rod of Aaron was not connected to the earth. But when presence was introduced, it still bordered. So Jesus comes close to the tree. And the tree does not recognize the effect of his presence. And he cost it. Everything Jesus came close to produce. The man at gate, I mean the man at Bethesda. He said it is not the season. He said I know. But now that I am here. It is not just the sick that should hear him. The tree should hear him too. That regardless what disadvantage, if he is there, he still expects food. So when you give excuses and say, it's because I'm coming from another nation, I'm coming from this, God says, what then is the advantage of my presence? What then is the advantage of my presence? Moses had everything. They had gold that they got from Egypt. They had weapons of war. They had food. They had the advantage of numbers. But he said, with all of this, if your presence will not go with me, don't send us from here. 
I rather remain even with all of these provisions. But if your presence will not go with me, I will not leave this place. I know the consequences of going no matter how equipped, but without your presence. Are we learning now? So I'm going to show you three keys very quickly. How to become a fruitful harvest as a person that brings God glory. If it is true that you are a seed yourself, if it is true that God is a sower, if it is true that you are called the planting of the Lord, then it is also true that he expects a harvest. Sooner or later, he is going to come to your church that he's given you, your business come to you and ask you, I've shown you mercy. I've shown you grace. I connected you to men. I gave you pastors after my heart. Where is the fruit, the return on investment? We used to sing an old hymn in the Anglican church. Um, Must I go an empty handed? You see that? Not one soul to greet him. Must I empty handed go? Some of you don't know it. <laughs> Praise God. Men can become trees from seeds. Psalm 1 3. He shall be like a tree that is planted by the riverside. The question is by who? Now you know the answer. Planted by God Himself. Now, look at the character of this tree. Please look up. Because this tree was uniquely planted by the riverside, it does not have to wait for seasons to produce. It does not have to depend on the rain that comes from the sky. It is planted by the riverside. Although, as far as producing fruit is concerned, there are seasons because it must grow. It says, but when that season comes, it bringeth forth his fruit in season, and in a strange way, his leaf does not wither. I wish I had time. I would have told you why the leaves of a tree withers. It withers as a principle of conserving itself when seasons change. It will shed some leaves so that it can stand until a favorable season comes. Back in Africa, we call it dry seasons. You see that now? So trees shed their leaves as a principle to conserve themselves. And he says, but this kind of tree, you will never find a withered leaf. And as a result, whatsoever. Remember our whatsoever yesterday? Whatsoever he doeth prospers. Because he is a tree himself. Number one, the first key that I will leave with you as a final session this morning, desiring to bring God great glory through your life, is that you must understand the dynamics of fervent, effectual prayer. You must understand the dynamics of fervent, effectual prayer as a tool that can grow a seed to a tree, a tree to a fruitful vine that produces. There is no believer who does not understand and will not invest in strategic, consistent prayer who will ever be able to bring glory to the name of the Lord. In Luke chapter 18 and verse 1, the Bible says, He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5.17, he says, pray without ceasing. That means be consistent in your prayer. James 5.13, is any man afflicted? The Bible says, let him pray. Mark 11.24, what things soever ye believe, when ye pray, believe that thou receivest them and thou shalt have them. Now, prayer does many things in the life of a believer. Four of them particularly, according to scripture. Number one, 
the first assignment of prayer and that is the greater part of the reason why we pray is for growth and transformation for the average believer our understanding of prayer is just as a tool for receiving things i know you have prayer requests we are going to pray on that but the primary assignment of prayer was designed for communion growth and transformation luke chapter 9 from verse 29 and as he prayed the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glistening you can pray yourself into a stronger version of you you can pray yourself into a courageous version of you you can pray into a more superior spiritual version you can pray and transit from a carnal version to a spiritual version because the bible says to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace are we learning now you must invest in prayer this is the apostolic model that was left with the church in acts chapter 2 from verse 42 he says and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and in fellowship in breaking of bread and in prayer acts chapter 6 and verse 4 but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word you must obtain grace my dear people especially for those of us with all due respect who have come overseas do not allow some of the limitations that you find to erode these principles they are irrefutable you must discipline yourself to pray there is no gift of prayer prayer is labor you obtain the doing grace but you pray say i will pray, I will pray. one more time say i will, pray. I will pray that every time you submit yourself to prayer it is your participation. Remember, the reason why the seed grows is that it yields to all the processes that are pro-growth. The yieldedness of the seed is what makes it become a tree. Are we together? There is no rebellious seed that produces. The seed stays and submits itself to all of the processes that will transit it from a seed to become a tree. Prayer. Is an irrefutable, non-negotiable principle if you must become mighty. Ordinary men became mighty men when they prayed. So assignment number one of prayer for growth and transformation. Number two, prayer is a platform for obtaining requests and making petitions. Obtaining requests and making petitions. Unto thee that answers prayer shall all flesh come, the Bible says. Hallelujah. Yeah. When you pray, like we read in Mark eleven twenty four, there's a connection between desires and prayer. The Bible says, ye have not because ye ask not. Ye have not because ye ask not. Ye have not because ye ask not. So prayer becomes a platform to obtain requests and to make petitions. Number three, the third assignment of prayer is as a platform to make prophetic decrees and create realities. You can use prayer as a platform to make prophetic decrees and to create realities. Ezekiel chapter 37, I prophesied as I was commanded and there was a sound. You can create realities. You can reprogram your climate. You can shift climates in the place of prayer. This is powerful. Prayer is not always about asking God. It is also about speaking to things, using the God-given ability. The first revelation of God in scripture was as a creator. And since he made us in his image and likeness, we are co-creators. You can create realities. Even God who quickened the dead and called the things that be not as though, called the things that be not as though, you can call things you can frame things the bible says through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of god that everything you see is a child the mother is the invisible realm you can call things from the realm invisible to the realm visible just because it is the realm of the spirit does not mean it is unreal invisible does not mean unreal invisible just means beyond the scope of your sight for instance, there are angels in this place. 
for instance god is in this place but from a physical standpoint you can only see those that have your material frame even science has proven that there are things that other lower animals see that we may not be able to see the way they see it hallelujah the final assignment of prayer as revealed in scripture is as a tool for warfare and prophetic intercession warfare warfare establishing realities as finished in christ making them manifest in spite of satan the bible does not hide the fact that there is an adversary who is determined to thwart the purposes of god are we together if you don't believe this you are going to learn a painful lesson with your life it is true it's a fact that there is an adversary jesus said the thief who called him a thief you want to know when the bible tells you there is a thief around your vicinity you want to pay close attention ignoring the thief um, may not be an act of responsibility you don't have to be afraid of the thief but you must be sober and you must be vigilant because your adversary the devil like a roaring lion he moves to and fro seeking for whom he may devour and he says be sober not be fearful but be vigilant he will kill anything he can find steal anything he can find destroy anything he can find and i hope you know that satan also depends on the word of god to know how to attack you he needs to know what god is giving you otherwise what will he steal he has to depend on what God is giving you. I sought for a man to stand in the gap that I would not destroy the land, but I found none. Can I tell you, I'm praying that God will raise prophetic intercessors over the city of Leicester. Men who will give him no rest until he establishes Leicester as a praise. Nothing happens within any territory until God finds men, men who are able to partner with his program, even in the place of prayer. One of the major ways we participate in kingdom activities is by lifting up incense of prayer. That the age-long spirits that have hijacked the minds, the thinking of men would come under subjection. I submit to you and with all due respect to all of you who are medical professionals I said it yesterday you have to pray for the spirits that are killing the children with mental health don't think it's just a medical issue it's a satanic issue there is an intentional programming to literally delude a generation and if you think it's all about oh my child I think something is wrong with him I am telling you this I'm not stupid you believe me Satan is very generational. He can target an age range and leave the remaining. When he finds out a generation, as a generation have declared their loyalty to the God of heaven, he can give up on them and grow with their children. This is what has happened to many western regions. So you, find, you can find a region where the only people who are serious with God are people, say, from 60 or 70 years. They will tell you about the crusades of T.L. Osborne. And then you find a generation that as a generation, they have decided corporately to reject God. May it not be under your watch. I'm saying this because as we'll be praying shortly, I'm trusting that God will raise prophetic intercessors women after the order of Anna the prophetess who will stay in the temple and pray down God's program every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you listen overcome. let me tell you this i didn't start ministry at the federal capital territory of nigeria for those of you know, who know nigeria i started ministry from a place where you don't last up to three years 
because of the strong Islamic powers that rest there. I watched people who loved God start ministry and they were shredded into pieces. Listen, there are spirits assigned to territories, given assignments to fight the program of God. If you don't believe this, you, you better believe this. Listen, there are spirits assigned to believers. There are spirits assigned to ministerial offices. They are not assigned to men. They are assigned to offices. When you are Elijah, be ready for Jezebel. When you are Samson, be ready for Delilah. Samson is not just a man. It's a kind of grace. There are spirits that follow certain mantles to destroy. When believers are ignorant, you will allow the program of hell to just prevail. You will complain, but complaining does not stop it. I remember many years ago, I trekked from, I don't know how, I don't know your place here, so I cannot even use any reference, but a significant, at least a one or two hour walk. And I was praying and speaking over that Islamic land. I command the territories, lift up your heads, O ye gates. Be ye lifted. Let I am confident that the sermons you've immersed yourself in have served as a wellspring of blessings, uplifting your life and instilling a profound commitment to wholeheartedly serve God. We extend a warm invitation for you to become a subscriber to our YouTube channel. By activating the notification bell, you ensure that you remain connected and never miss any of our upcoming videos. Your subscription signifies more than a mere click. It represents a pledge to continual spiritual growth, enlightenment, and empowerment. Embark on this faith-filled journey with us as our channel aspires to be a haven for both spiritual seekers and devoted believers. We ardently believe in the transformative power of God's Word, and our objective is to share messages that deeply resonate with your soul. Join our community, subscribe, and allow the radiant light of divine wisdom to illuminate your path. We express our gratitude for your integral role in this uplifting journey, and we pray that God's abundant blessings overflow in your life. Amen. Stay connected with us on all our social media platforms at Flaming Channel, and feel free to explore our website at www.flamingchannel.com. Thank you, and may God abundantly bless you.